Hey guys, it's bunny season! Hey guys, it is almost Easter and that means that it is bunny season. So you have probably seen these little guys up and down your Facebook feed if you're a crafter. Um, you've seen them in Facebook Marketplace, you've seen people post them in groups, and today I'm going to show you exactly how I stitched this out on my bunny's ears. It's actually really, really easy. I know it can be a little bit intimidating, and you're probably wondering, well, did you stitch through the ears? And actually, I did. <laughs> so I stitched through the bunny's ears. I know that some people actually take them apart but I just didn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm just lazy. I don't know, <laughs> but I didn't do that. Um, I just stitched right through and it looks fine. Now, um, don't worry if you think that a customer isn't going to like the stitching. I sold over $500 in profit with these guys. Actually, it was a different style. It was this style um, a couple years ago. They actually still have this style at Walmart. It's just different colors. Um, I sold those guys and made $500 in profit within two weeks on the bunnies and not one person complained about the stitching. Actually, some people do like it because they like the colors. And if you're super concerned, you can just match your thread up with the fur of the bunny and you won't even really know. But I'm also going to show you uh, in, the, in the tutorial how I covered up um, some of the numbers and the letters. So you won't have to worry about that. So I did get these from Walmart. They were 588 and I think this is just like this season's bunny. So, um, or this year's bunny, it seems like every year they kind of come out with a different one. So, um, I did stitch through the ears and I used tearaway stabilizer. Now you can use a water soluble stabilizer on here if you'd like. Um, if I did this again, I probably would. So just kind of keep that in mind, but it's personal preference. So don't worry too much about that. Um, but just kind of play around and see what you like. So I wanted to show you guys the stitching on the ear. So I didn't use the water soluble so that you could see it actually stitching out. So I want to show you up close what this looks like. This is my daughter's name. And then I just did the year. So 2020 and um, I name the font and everything in the video. I show you um, exactly the software that I used and um, how I used it. So everything is going to be in the tutorial for you guys and I hope that you enjoy it and I will see you over in the next step. Bye! Okay guys so we have our bunny laid out and we want to measure out his ears. So this is the $5.88 bunny from Walmart. So you can go ahead and use my measurements if you'd like. I'm gonna kind of keep them to the beginner measurements. So if you're not a beginner or you're like intermediate, you can add a little bit to this and you'll be fine. But I'm gonna use uh, pretty much what I, would, what I would feel comfortable with if I was just starting out. So if you've never done these before, when you measure, you're going to lay his ears out as flat as you can. And one tip that I found is if you take a piece of cotton fabric and put it over his ears and kind of just press them on like a wool setting or a synthetic setting, it's gonna help you um, to lay his ears flat and to kind of open up this space. So we're gonna go ahead and measure his ears and you don't wanna start from the base of his head you want to start about an inch and a half down from his head. So I am measuring about six and a half inches. So even with that, I can't stitch six and a half inches and stop here because the first letter of my daughter's name would get stuck in the fur and we don't want that. So I'm going to take half an inch off and that's going to leave me with a nice space to work in. So I'm going to have a six inch space to work in to feel comfortable and confident that I am not going to get my needle stuck in his head or I am, I'm not going to get uh, my needle stuck in the fur. So it's going to give me a nice space in the middle to work with. Also, we need to measure across. So you don't need to measure in the middle up here. You need to measure down here. So, and I'm sorry, I know you can see my ring light in um, <laughs> the camera. So I'm going to measure across. And I am getting about two and a quarter. If I move up a little bit, I would get three. So not two and a quarter, 
two and three quarters. So I'm going to do a font that is two inches. Um, and I wouldn't go any bigger than that if you are new to this. If you're advanced, you might be able to take it up to um, two and a half inches and feel comfortable depending on where you're starting. But if you're a beginner, then I would just go ahead and keep it at two inches. When you put the two inch mark in the middle, you can see that you're going to have a good amount of room on each side. Let me flatten this down. You're going to have a good amount of room on each side to start. So you won't have to worry about the fur getting caught in here as long as the name fits in your six inch um, block that you're going to use. Now my daughter's name only has four letters, so it's a little bit easier. But if you have more than four letters um, or probably even like five letters, then you may need to take your um, font and just bring it down just a little bit just so that it will fit in that um, the six inch space that we have. Okay, so it probably sounds confusing. I promise it's not. Once you get going, you will see that it's it's pretty simple to do and that you can just stitch these out super quick. Now we're going to go into the embroidery software and we're going to design the name and the year for our bunny. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in the basting stitches so that you will get these perfectly centered on your machine. Okay, so now we want to go into our embroidery software and I am currently using Embrilliance. So the first thing that I'm going to do is click on my text option and I'm going to type my daughter's name, Emma. I'm going to go down to my font and I want the Are You Serious font. It's a two inch font by Itch to Stitch. And now this is a little bit too big for me. Um, the, the two inch works, but it's a little bit too long. So I'm just going to shorten it up just a tiny bit. If you're not comfortable doing this, that's fine. Just pick a different size font. But um, I just want to make sure that it fits within that six inch range for me. And you can manipulate them a small amount. I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it too much. So when I have this, uh, this typed out, I am then going to click it and I am going to turn it 90 degrees to the left. So I'm going to bring this font over or the word over, not too close to the edge, but about there. Now you can see it fits, it's, it's a little bit longer than six inches, but that's okay. It's going to fit perfectly. For the second one, I am going to click my font or the text again and type in 2020. Now it already has my uh, font and everything saved from before, so I'm gonna hit enter, and then I am going to rotate this one 90 degrees to the right. So the way that you can look at it is the top of the letters and the top of the numbers should be facing each other. So you can center these so that this is directly in the middle. If you would like, you would just click the one uh, and go to the center button and then uh, it'll do that for you, but I'm not too concerned with it. So I am just going to put a basting stitch around here and our basting stitch is going to tell us the exact placement of where the letters are going to go on the bunny's ears. So the first thing I'm going to do is click 2020 and I'm going to individually click these and I'm going to click Baste design. So it put this basting design around my year. And then I'm going to do the same thing for Emma. Click utility, click base design. Now that we have the basting stitches around the name and the year, you just want to make sure that over here you can see that my um, basting stitches are number one and two. So if yours doesn't say that and you're not sure how to use it in your program, um, if you do have in brilliance, it's just simple as just dragging these around. But if you um, don't have it, it's not a big deal. When you are turning your machine on and everything is setting up, you just want to stitch out your basting stitches first. So you'll just skip until you see the basting stitch um, step and then the basting stitch step again. So it should be two separate steps. Once those are all set up on your hoop on the screen, just make sure that you have enough room between the two. So you don't want to have um, 
trying to get this to select. You don't want to have everything just like this, like super close. You want to kind of keep it a little bit further out. That's going to help with the placement of the ears and making sure that your ears don't overlap and stitch on each other. So that looks good to me. Now remember before you do this, you have to save your design. So I'm gonna go up to file. I'm going to click save stitch file as. I'm just gonna name it Emma and then 2020. Now I'm going to save it to an EXP file because that's what my machine uses. So if you're using a brother, I believe it's PES. Um, and I'm gonna save this and then go ahead and put it on my jump drive. And I will see you guys over at my machine. Okay, so I have my stabilizer hooped and on my machine. So now I need to go into my Bernina and select the 2020 and Emma. So that came up on my screen and just, you know, double check if you have a screen like this, um, just double check and make sure that everything looks right. To me, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and start stitching out. Now I just want to do the two basting stitches. So it's going to tell me, it tells me first, you know, what it's doing. And it's going to do both of my basting stitches. So we want to have a basting stitch for Emma and a basting stitch for 2020. So now my basting boxes are done. And just in case you're wondering, this is a tearaway stabilizer. I have two pieces hooped onto here. Um, I like to work with two pieces instead of one. So this is a tearaway. And now we're gonna go and put our bunnies in our basting box. So we're gonna put the ears in there and I'm gonna show you exactly how easy it is to get the stitching done. Okay, so I have my basting boxes done. And now what I wanna do is get the bunnies ears into these boxes. So I am going to go ahead and use, this is the spray and bond and it's a basting adhesive. If you're not comfortable using this because it's a uh, chemical, then you can pin the ears also. You would just pin them near the edge um, until you can get your basting stitch down on top of the ears. You can pin it on the edge and probably down in here where your needle isn't gonna be. And then once the basting stitch is down, you can go ahead and remove those needles. So for me, I am gonna go ahead and use the spray and bond. So, and you just wanna do it lightly because if not, you will not be able to um, get the ears away from the, the tear away when it's time to peel it away. So you wanna make sure that you're hooping this right. So his head should be towards the back of the hoop. So he's gonna be behind my machine if that, makes sense. And I want to want to try to get this in here the best I can to show you guys. So this box is the Emma box. I'm going to put a little bit more adhesive. This is the Emma box. So just go ahead and now is the time where you can really see where your stitches are going to lay and where they're going to be. So I'm thinking right here. That looks good. I'm gonna press this down. Now remember, you wanna make sure that the head is away from here. You don't want it too close because if it's too close, that's how we're gonna get into trouble and the needle is gonna go right in there and it's gonna be a disaster. So make sure that it is far enough away and you also wanna make sure that it's centered so that your stitching is gonna lie right in the middle. That looks pretty good. Okay, and now we're gonna do it for the other side too. So I am just gonna place this in the middle the best that I can. Now remember we said that we don't want the ears to overlap. If they're touching, that's fine, but you don't want them to overlap to wear so much so that the stitching can get into the other ear. We wanna keep that completely separate. 
and it happens like not on purpose but you know sometimes it just does happen once you know that they're lined up and you check to make sure that everything is going to stitch right within the boxes we're going to then do the basting stitch that we just did on top of the ears so now you can definitely see the placement make sure that you like it make sure it's going to work for you and that it's going to fit before you go ahead and stitch everything out and I'm going to show you that exact step on my machine. So I'm, I'm sorry, I know the lighting isn't great, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys a close up. You can see that the bunny is towards the back of the machine and that I have his ears, the tip of his ears towards me. So that's how I'm setting mine up. You may have better luck setting yours up the other way, but for me, this is just how it worked best especially filming so that you didn't just stare at his head the entire time. So now we're going to do our basting stitch. So you're going to see exactly where the basting stitch is going to hit in this on his ears. So I'm going to go back up to number one and just be careful because you can kind of tell like his head, it's right at the back of the machine. So just keep an eye on that. So I have the bunny ears on my stabilizer and in the machine. Now you want to be very careful when you're doing this because you don't want his head, which is right here, you don't want his head to get stuck under here. That can happen really easy. So I'm going to try to set this down somewhere the best I can so that you guys can see um, how the basting stitch is going to work on top of the ears. So now that we have our bunny ears basted, we can go ahead and stitch out the name. Just make sure that you check and you know see, make sure that it's centered. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's okay. No one's really gonna know. You'll probably be the only person that knows. So just go ahead and check and make sure that it's to your liking. And then we're gonna go down to our stitch function to stitch out the name. So mine is gonna start with the E at the tip of the ear, and if that's what you want, just make sure that your placement is right and that this is the way that your wording will look. So mine is gonna start with the E, and I'm gonna show you most of the stitching. Um, however, you know, it'll have to be sped up because you'll be here forever. So I'm gonna speed this up and show you guys. Now, um, you can use water soluble stabilizer if you'd like, just because of this video and showing you guys, I'm not going to so that you can see the stitching, but you definitely can if you would like, especially if you have a higher pile um, on the ears. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching.
Okay guys, I just took the bunny off of the hoop and, or off of the machine and I'm sorry for the lighting, but I've worked so many different angles with the lighting and it's just not working out. So if you have any of your jump stitches that you need to cut, you can go ahead and do that now if you feel more comfortable with doing it on the hoop. Um, I do, so I go ahead and just trim those up, but I'm going to um, cut my basting stitches out. So. Just turn it around and you can use a seam ripper or scissors, um, whatever you are more comfortable using. And you can just go through and just clip like every other one. That's going to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so now we have our basting stitches clipped. They're still, they're not fully out, but we'll get those out when we uh, pull away our stabilizer. So I'm going to unhoop the bunny or take him off of the hoop. So I'm just going to pull these away. Now, I do have two um, layers on here bless you
Okay, guys, so we have our bunny. Um, all of his stabilizer has been taken off. I just used the tear away. And as you can see, you can see the stitches um, on the back side. That's totally okay. It's not a big deal. I know some people tend to freak out over it. It's, it's okay. I've sold a ton of these in previous years and I've never had anyone complain about them. So what you want to do is uh, you're going to want to kind of loosen the fur up. So that way it's not all just flattened down. So it just came off the machine and if you're using a uh, a spray adhesive, then it's going to be a little bit flatter for now until all of that wears off anyway. But you can just take a tool, something like this or like blunt scissors. I got this from um, uh, fatquartershop.com and it just has a blunt tip and then another side. Um, it's it's used for quilting and stuff like that to press seams open and has a seam ripper. But um, if you have something like this, then you can definitely use this to get the fur out of your ears. So as you can see, I am just kind of wiggling this around and it's starting to already come out from underneath the stitches. So eventually these stitches are going to, for the most part, be covered up. Um, I wouldn't be concerned with them, you know, showing uh, a ton and all. People, I've never had a person complain. People just don't, they don't seem to care. And if you're using a pretty color, I mean, that looks nice anyway. It's not like, to me, it's not ugly. It doesn't look unprofessional. It just looks embroidered. And I think that people are going to expect to see that. So you just want to take a tool like this and just go in and just kind of mess with the fur and the stitching. If you have something like this um, where it's really flattened down, just give it a little bit of time. Just go in there and, you know, try to get all the fur as well as much as you can out. But again, it's not a big deal. Um, I think that it looks just fine. So that's the one ear. And then this is the other ear. So I think it turned out great. And I'm pretty sure that my daughter's gonna love it. Okay guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you could, please like and comment on this video. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. I would truly be grateful if you did. If you guys would like to see any other tutorials, just let me know and I will do my best to get them filmed. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.